They'd shut up a minute. But they wouldn't stay shut up. You see? So all of a sudden, I come to a triangle where a road went that way and another one come this way, and I pulled over on the grass in the middle of that Audubon. Well, by the time I got out the door, I had my belt off. And I got one of them at a time by the arm. You know, it's like a little merry-go-round, isn't it? When they're running and hopping and screaming and you're, you know, you're getting a hold of them and, and you're, you're saying, now I'm doing this because you wouldn't obey. And if you're under my house, you're going to obey. I don't care if you're seven or 70. Dr. Spock said that ain't the way to do it. Well, let me tell you what. My boys grew up to know the Lord, and they knew respect. My 46-year-old son, he'll be 46 this month, still calls me with great respect. And it wasn't because I run his life the way Dr. Spock said to run it. I run it biblically according to how the Word of God says to run it. And that's exactly the way we got to do it, in a loving way, in a loving, godly way. And I had a German guy stop. What are you doing? Whipping those kids, I said, they're mine. And, of course, I wasn't as mellowed then as I was now. And I gave him the invitation. Because I was pretty macho. Man, we worked out. I, I played Army football. I was in good shape. I said, boy, I said, if you want to get involved in the family, why don't you come on over here, too? You see, that was the old nature speaking, of course. And uh, what I'm saying is this. You mothers and your daddies make such an impression and have an imprint on your children that if something's wrong right now, maybe you need to get back to the closet, draw up a new plan, and get it presented to your children in a way that they respect and honor the plan and the one presenting it. You understand? You can do it, but you have to stop and wait a minute. Now, what God's saying here, in order, He said in John, First John four four. You are of God, little children. I remember talking to Tyler a few years ago, and uh, he was out there at the swing. That's my grandson, and they was waiting on the bus, and I had sent my wife and daughter to Texas to do work on. See, a true uh, Proverbs 31 wife is in the field gleaning and working while the men are in the gate making the laws. So what I did, I sent them to remodel four houses in, in Texas. And I've got the grandkids, and I'm waiting on the bus to come, and they're at the swing, and under that swing is nothing but powder dust. And I, I'm drinking my tin, I look up, and it looks like a, a smoke cloud over there at the swing. And Tyler's back mad, kicking dirt all over Tori, our granddaughter. And of course, I said, Tyler, get over here! So he come over there. I said, son, did you know what she was doing? Yeah, she made me mad. She wouldn't let me on the swing. I said, well, she is on the swing. I said, have I taught you not to do that with your sister? Yes. I said, so you're doing something you know you shouldn't do. Remember, sinners sin by nature. Believers sin by choice. So he had made a choice to sin. Well, as a result, the old belt. He said, you mean your grandchildren? I said, yeah, I mean my grandchildren. And I whipped him good. Of course, they get on the bus and go, and I have to tell my daughter on the telephone. And the response was, you mean right before they went to school, you gave them a whipping? Best time, I said, honey, they're going to a higher learning situation. They just learned something this morning that they won't back up on. You understand? I know families that's afraid to 
discipline their children because they'll call CPS or the local law on them to get them arrested. Mothers, you need to raise your children in a way that they know under God, you and daddy are supreme rulers in the house. This garbage, mothers, that children have a voice is wrong because what it does, they have a voice to echo your voice. We have a voice to echo God's voice. Our declaration is nothing but an echo and a resounding word. Father, you said it. I do it. I respond. And if I don't respond, your covering is removed from me and I am given over to the enemy to come. Are you? Amen. Thank you, honey. You know that. Isn't it good to know? We got an amen corner right on the front row. How old are you, baby? Four? Okay, I'm going to come down there and preach. <laughs> First of all, you need to understand that you are God. God validates you if you're born again. Maybe you need to change your habits, maybe some ways you need to change, but God will help you do that too. He'll love you in the process of doing that. He'll get you corrected so that the image that you print upon your children's minds will be the image of God through a loving, caring mother. And it, love has been so discarded in, in this generation. Love is not gooey, loving. Love is living a life like God would have you live in front of your children, whether it be kissing them or spanking them. It's the same. It's the same to develop a child in a way they should go and they won't depart from it. And every morning being before God at your family table, teaching them the word of God at home. I heard some people the other day said, if I'd only had a, a, a youth group to put my kids in, they wouldn't be like they are. Well, we had youth groups all over America and from 1963 to 2009. We had 84% that said they believed in Jesus and went to church that were teenagers. 2009, we had 4%. So what happened there? Because we delegated authority to a young guy that just come out of the drug scene. Nothing wrong with that. I'm glad you're out of the drug scene, but you ain't going to lead my youth. God said, let old people disciple young people. The world system says old is out, all young is in, and it's created a monster. Oh, I'm... So, so let me say this. I want everybody to say, I am of God. Now, now that is if you're born again. Now, if you're not born again, let me get you born again right now. If you don't know Jesus this morning, if he hadn't been one that come into your heart, Romans 10, 9, and 10 says that you must believe Jesus is the Son of God, that he died for your sins, and on the third day he rose again. If you believe that and confess with your mouth unto salvation, you shall be saved. And, and God is moving. We had so many people saved and baptized in the Holy Spirit recently. It's just been amazing what God's doing in the earth. He set it up. If you, Young or old, if you're here today and you want to, from your seat right there, raise your hand and say, I want to acknowledge Jesus as the Lord and my Savior today. Let me see your hand. Come on, raise it. Anybody here? Don't go another day if you're, if you're not. Is everybody born again? Everybody saved here? Everybody know Jesus? Amen? Okay? So, you are of God, little children. And have overcome them. Them what? Every circumstance of life, every demonic, oppressive thought that Satan would try to put in your mind, everything that would try to make you think the church was not going to make it, everything trying to make you think your family could never be put back together, everything that the enemy is trying to destroy you with, God says, I put something on the inside of you that's greater than your circumstances. 
you see. And he says this.